Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the hilarious and comical set theoretical derivation of number. Uh, I can't tell you how much I laughed at this when I first saw it. Uh, it's not a derivation of any sort, and uh, to be quite frank, that uh, modern mathematics is based on this is very very telling indeed so let me show you just some of the problems that one comes across when dealing with this nonsense okay so over here I'm going to look at the Wikipedia entry, entry because you know the Wikipedia moronica always has the uh, mainstream definitions which have been published so it doesn't matter that uh, there are a load of uh, garbage as long as they're being published they belong in the moronica so <coughs> at any rate the way the numbers supposedly the natural numbers are defined are as follows uh, zero is defined to be the empty set and well initially one might think that's not too bad but it starts getting interesting when we look at the second statement uh, the definition of one now the definition of one is a set containing the empty set, right? So, hmm, that's pretty interesting because uh, in set theory, the empty set is a subset of every set. It's not necessarily contained in that set, but it's a subset. So in this particular case here, you would have the empty set being contained in this outer set as well as being a subset so uh, if you know anything about set theory you'll see that you can you will arrive at some very serious contradictions with that uh, it's logically not possible for it to be both a subset and an element but let's uh, play along with the modern academic morons who base all their ideas on this crap theory okay and so we do the same with 2, and we get that, and the same with 3, and we get that. Now, watch what happens when we try to do arithmetic. Um, if we add 0 and 1, we're effectively looking at the union of 0 and 1. Because, by the way, if you look at the Wikipedia entry, that's how the successor is defined. So, if you look over here, it says SN is equal to N union and that set which is supposedly the elements that came before in other words this here right so uh, uh, no, notice notice another thing that's inc incredibly hilarious here it says n minus one now what on earth is that that already assumes <laughs> that already assumes the natural numbers are in place and that one knows how to do arithmetic with the natural numbers uh, what does n minus 1 mean? It's completely absurd. There are self-references, self-referential uh, uh, implications in this derivation almost in every second or third proposition that's made. Um, that it makes no sense is, is really a euphemism. It's a euphemism. This theory is absolute rot. Students, do not waste your time on this garbage. There is uh, one incredible idiot on Psi.Math called Dan Christensen. Uh, the guy is an unbelievable moron. Um, you can't discuss anything with this individual. He is completely incorrigible and convinced <laughs> that piano arithmetic uh, is actually valid and forms a foundation of modern mathematics. Well, in that particular uh, uh, aspect he's not alone because most uh, modern academics think that piano arithmetic is the foundation of modern mathematics uh, if you don't know who piano is well let me show you a photograph now look at that look at that tell me do you think that that monkey looking creature had more intelligence than the ancient Greeks this absolute baboon that you're staring at right here <laughs> Italian mathematician. <laughs> I, I just can't help laughing at that. Now, this moron, as well as Bertrand Russell, 
uh, a sick English fool who knew nothing about logic yet published an entire book on logic uh, have influenced uh, mathematics that is used by the mainstream academia. I can't tell you how much damage these two primates have done to the field of mathematics. It's, it's actually not describable with words. Uh, and today countless hours are spent by students trying to understand the absolute rot that these morons have put together. So anyway, not to get carried not to get carried away off on a tangent, let's go back to what I was looking at here. So you can't do any arithmetic with these definitions. They're absolute crap. I mean, you know, look here. The successor the successor of N is equal to N union N where where uh, N or where this here this set here is equal to 0 1 2 dot 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 N minus 1 now N minus 1 is as I said quite hilarious because it's not defined anywhere and of course this whole thing here doesn't really define natural numbers because you could use anything here instead of uh, digits you could say for example 0 is equal to A and then <coughs> 1 is equal to 0 is equal to A and 2 is equal to 0 1 is equal to A and A in curly basis and closed and so on you know 0 1 2 so there's, there's nothing here that guarantees that these elements here even have a relationship between them uh, that indicates anything other apart from containment. In other words, there is nothing here that indicates the main property of the natural numbers, which is the fact that they have uh, a difference of one between each successive natural numbers. Excuse my curly braces here, those are curly braces. I don't care to write out this junk. It, it really is junk and I don't care about it. But you get the drift. So this here tells you nothing about natural numbers. Okay, So you can put anything you like in there. I mean, there's nothing that will tell you that the difference between this element and this element is one. Which is why I find this n minus one so hilarious. Uh, only an idiot can fall for this kind of crap. Uh, I don't call them piano actions, I call them piano crap actions because that's really what they are. Um, in one of my previous videos I actually pulled these uh, ridiculous uh, five crap actions apart. They failed right from the very start and I'm just surprised that today uh, mathematicians and academic morons still use them. So now well, what happened? I mean, you can't, you can't do arithmetic. You can't even measure anything with these, with these definitions. There's nothing you can measure. Well, what is the measure of two? What measures this, this concept here? What measures it? Okay. The closest you can get to telling me what measures two is zero and one. Oh, zero and one measure two? It's absolute rot. Now, the first thing you read about uh, in syllabi, if, especially if you're an educator like myself, in syllabi or curricula, uh, one of the competencies students have to acquire is that of measurement. Uh, so, there is no way you can learn measurement by using such junk definitions. It's just not possible. What does this tell you about the measure of two? The answer is nothing. Now, in the Euclidean derivation, the numbers are derived perfectly from scratch. And rather than going to the entire derivation here, which is only about four or five steps, I've already done this in a pr previous uh, video, which is called the History of Numbers. And I'll place a link to it in the details section when I upload this particular video. I encourage you to, to study the history of number and also to look at 
my actions, which are true actions, and have basically uh, stated everything that Euclid tried to do in non-vague or referential terms. One of Euclid's uh, definitions is vague, and another one is referential, but I've corrected that in the new elements. So I encourage you to watch the history of numbers and to learn about the Euclidean derivation, which is the perfect derivation of number. If aliens were to think of a derivation of number from scratch, they wouldn't think about it this way. This is just junk. They would think about it the way Euclid did and the ancient Greeks. And so, anyway, I really want to warn you that uh, finite, although finite set theory is reasonably useful, infinite set theory and the myth of an infinite set are a deep abyss that you can fall into and stay in the rest of your life without really producing anything but mythology in mathematics, which I call mythmatics. So don't waste your time on set theory. Uh, don't spend countless hours trying to understand this rot, because that's all it is. It's absolute rot. Using this definition here, you can show that 0 plus 1, which is 1, is equal to 2. So this, this definition here contradicts itself even before you can do anything with it. I mean, come on, is 1 equal to 2? Obviously not. But that's the result of ill-formed definitions. And there are many of those in, in mathematics. Now, I'd like to encourage you also, while I'm at it right now, to, to study my new calculus. And the new calculus is the first and only rigorous formulation of calculus in history. There are, there are uh, m many lessons on it. I think there are about 10 lessons uh, on the main site that you can study. It only deals, uh, in those lessons, it only deals with the single variable, but once you've learned the single variable, the multivariable new calculus is easy to learn. It doesn't use concepts like infinity, infinitesimals, or uh, limit theory. Okay, so limit theory is absolutely not required in the study of derivatives or integration. While it's useful in finding asymptotes and studying the behavior of functions in general, limit theory is not really required for differential or integral calculus. And the new calculus redefines both the derivative and the integral without limits or infinity or infinitesimals. Okay, so that's a bit of advertising. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you'll join me again next time for some more information. Uh, this is the New Calculus Channel. My name is John Gabriel. Goodbye.